now third part of the video and uh, in this session we are going to study about the drainage patterns river features man made and natural features land use means of transport and communication settlements and inkling occupation of the topographical survey sheets which are provided to you in dendritic pattern the river and its tributaries make a pattern like the veins of a leaf or we can say a branch of a tree you can see the example in grid square 3894 in the trellis pattern the tributaries join the main river at a right angle or almost at a right angle as you can see in grid square 4093 in radial pattern the tributaries come out from a hill in a circular manner hence this is called a radial pattern you can see the example in grid square 3985 now the various uh, features connected with river are many many questions are asked on the basis of the features connected with river first of all let us see this river is dry how can you be sure because you can see the river bed speculated with black dots it shows that the river bed is exposed then you can see these white patches these are known as islands these are known as islands then you see the some of the streams here they are not meeting the main river so they may the question may ask may be asked that in figure in grid reference 9478 the stream is not meeting the main river why give one reason well this is why because the there could be a limestone region there could be a desert region where the evaporation is very high or the water is sunk is seeped in before the river meets the main river hence it is called a disappearing stream because before meeting the main river it disappears then you have the perennial rivers perennial rivers are where the water is there throughout the year perennial word means that the river has water throughout the year but here you can see a thin water channel in the river thin water channel the term used is thin water channel you cannot say that river is perennial because the water may not be there throughout the year then you have inland drainage inland drainage is these rivers which do not go out they are within the area but they do not meet the main river so these are called inland drainage the undefined stream is here you can see these are undefined streams which are shown in dotted dash and dot dash see these are undefined streams broken ground is here in this grid square 9679 is the broken ground what is broken ground generally it is found in the dry or arid region you can see this area is arid region because mostly the sand features are there the area is dry and here this is there whenever there is rain the top soil is washed away and the area is left uh, 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 with the subsoil and very um, uncultivable land it is found only in arid or dry regions river capture and river gap it this is one of the uh, reasons when sometimes there is it's connected with river erosion but may not be seen in this dry region dry streams are all shown in black see all these rivers are dry and they are shown in black that means that the river the area this whole area gets seasonal rainfall now man made and natural features children 
generally the service sheet contains the man made and natural features for example for example the the service sheet has man made and natural features both you can see the streams are natural pamira is natural the uh, dry tanks are natural the trees in general you will see they come under natural features broken land comes under natural features it cannot be man made but on the other hand the metal road the permanent huts and uh, the railway line meter gauge and uh, all this shows that these are post office etc they are man made features because they cannot be formed naturally so all these are man made features spot heights this uh, you know this uh, trees and the river and dry tank these are all natural features sheet rock here but survey tree in black is a man made feature because it is um, a surveyor's mark now we come to the land use in the survey sheet you might have seen that some areas are shown in green some are shown in yellow some are shown in white what do they signify the forests are generally shown in green with the writing on top fairly dense mixed jungle with bamboo devika this uh, open mixed jungle dense forest all these words are written there so in case the question comes what type of forests are found there you can just state what is written there you don't have to mention the what you study in geography as such deciduous and evergreen and all that no it is just you have to state what is written here in this case it is written fairly dense mixed jungle with bamboo cultivable land as we have discussed earlier that it is colored yellow colored yellow and it is called yellow wash if that is there it is automatically it is taken as okay the um, area is cultivable it the generally the occupation of the people is uh, cultivation alt uncultivable land is always shown in white where you will find open scrub then you may find outcrop rock outcrop and stony land all these firm terms would be written there that shows that the area is totally uh, dry and uh, it is uncultivable also the forest the cultivable land and the uncultivable land is signifies the occupation forest for forestry collection of uh, fruits uh, cutting of wood then cultivation farming or cultivation then here if you there is open scrub with small bushes it is for sheep and goat rearing means of irrigation wherever there is farming it is understood that there would be water now you can see in the survey sheet these small blue dots small blue dots show that there is water these are perennial wells so in india irrigation is normally done by uh, these wells canal in some cases the canals are also available this and it is um, getting its water from the artificial tank and hence the farming is uh, benefiting through this canal then you have this artificial tank with embankment is here it is filled with water it is artificial it is not natural not like this dry tank which is natural and which is just lying back and dry but in this there is water with embankment with 10r meaning that the height of this embankment is 10 meters and the uh, water is a uh, relative height of the uh, of the artificial tank is 10 meters and the water is there so it is a perennial artificial tank the river in this case you can see is uh, speckled with 
black dots showing that the river bed is exposed with no water at all so it is a dry river then without any water now we come to the settlements settlements are of three types you see in the survey sheet you will see the permanent huts the temporary huts and all that now there are three types of settlements when the you see the permanent huts clustered together in a group they are known as nucleated settlement when they are on either side of the river or a road when the group of or a, a cluster of these permanent huts you see on either side of the road or or a metal road it is called a linear settlement and scattered is as the name says one is here one is there and one is there it shows that the very few permanent huts are there with far apart situated far apart so these are the three types of settlements now the inferring occupation the occupation of the uh, people sometimes they ask the question what is the occupation of the people in the given uh, survey sheet the occupation of the people in this instance is generally speaking uh, the cultivation but suppose there was annual fair there or live or uh, uh, lime uh, the lime kiln is there or brick kiln is there or uh, there is an annual fair going on somewhere uh, or there is a, a metal road going by or there is a, a railway line crossing so the people could be uh, engaged in in this case people would be engaged in trade in the case of um, quarry they will be working and in the stone quarry suppose there is a post office and uh, a telegraph office people are working in the post office or in telegraph office suppose there are um, there is a forest here then people would be engaged in forestry or wood collection suppose there is a, a metal road as i said they are engaged in the trade so the indication of presence of mines quarries or kilns or metal road shows trade and mines and quarries people are working in that sometimes the the um, area has stone quarries then people are working in the stone quarry means of communication as i said there are various ways that the communication is shown on the survey sheet as in this case the western railway is shown in the corner of the map showing the that people can travel by train there is a metal road joining places different places in the survey sheet it shows the area is progressive and it is well connected with different towns so trade is promoted unmetal road is where the um it is kacha road and people are only traveling with the uh, on the kacha road that is called a unmetal road car track is these single lines these red lines these are known as car tracks made by man and used by bullock carts and all that then you have this pack tracks and footpath you can see footpath is shown with these dots small dots which show footpath which is made by the foot and uh, it is very easily um, accessible so these are different uh, means of communication sometimes you see the 
motorable in dry season is written there. It means that the area can be accessed in uh, accessed in the dry season and people are able to uh, drive through their uh, car or drive through their bullock cart or uh, walk through that stream or um, river. So this area, this shows that the area gets seasonal rainfall. Now inference of the survey sheet is based on the careful observation of topographical survey sheet and it is definitely the based on how familiar you are with the survey sheet. So you must go through it very carefully, study the different aspects, study the different um, you know conventional signs and symbols given there, study the various aspects or components of the survey sheet to be able to answer all the questions. Dry tanks, dry streams and exposed riverbed with island show that the area receives scanty rainfall. Too many causeways show that the area is motorable, hence it gets seasonal rainfall, less rainfall, scanty rainfall. Disappearing streams, if there are many, they show we can infer that the area may be a desert or limestone topography and hence the water uh, evaporates before it meets the main river. The size of the town is based, suppose sometimes a question comes, which town is bigger or more important, then it is the town is based on its important features like presence of post office, telegraph and post office, then inspection bungalow and how well connected it is with the means of communication. So if it is well connected, it shows that it is bigger than the other towns. Comparison between the two areas, suppose they ask, okay, you uh, compare and contrast the north of Sipunadi with the south of Sipunadi. Now, this needs to be worked on the basis of relief, drainage, land use, size of the cities and occupations. So, if the north, north part of it is uh, fully, uh, you know, hilly and uh, very little uh, perennial uh, uh, water is available, uh, yellow color uh, land is shown, that means, and the green part is shown, it means the area is uh, uh, hilly and with lot of forest, so forestry is the occupation. In the south, if it is desert area with disappearing streams, no water, no cultivation possible and with lot of white patches, that means the area is uncultivable and uh, dry. The students should be familiar with colors, conventional signs and symbols to be able to study the survey sheet. Unless you are familiar with the survey sheet, you will not be able to answer the questions. You can um, practice on the, um, on this, uh, you know, online practice for uh, map skills and the topo sheets to master the subjects. Hence, self-study and practice is the key to success, to key to score the best in board examinations since it is a compulsory question. So, it is mainly depends on how well you can practice to score the best. Thank you and wish you